What I wanted to talk about is like, not only is it going to take over the world, it's it's in the process, I think, of doing it. And I think um, the first and foremost reason that I believe this is what they've done on .NET. So when I talk about C Sharp, what I'm really talking about is .NET and .NET being the ecosystem around um, the language C Sharp and, and use C Sharp to um, utilize the .NET framework. And the .NET framework is a collection of libraries and and functionality that you can use in your app. The biggest thing that they've done is now all of that's going to be unified under one umbrella, which means there was one .NET. Before, um, what we call .NET 5, it was kind of fragmented. We had a .NET Core, we had a .NET Standard, we had you know, .NET 4.5, we had a lot of things. And now uh, Microsoft has unified this under one umbrella called .NET. And that means that we can build all of these things on this um, with one framework, which is web, obviously we'll talk about that, desktop definitely, uh, mobile for sure. And then you have things like smaller players like machine learning and uh, up in Azure. And you also have IoT um, embedded. You have a lot of things that you can build as well on top of the .NET. And that's the number one reason why we're doing it. The second reason that I think you're doing it is because of Microsoft in general. So like when you look at Microsoft, the amount of money they are putting into .NET is it's it's kind of mind boggling, staggering. And this is the tooling, the language, the frameworks, making sure that it runs across the board and across platform. Um, and it's also open source, which means that .NET runs natively right now, it runs in containers. And so, which means that you can take a website and push it to a Linux host. You can push it to, you know, an ISS host or a Windows based host. You can push it Azure, you can push it AWS, you can push it Oroku, you can push it wherever you want. And um, that is one of the big um, myths around it being only for Windows development that a lot of people didn't like, and rightfully so. I mean, when you were, you were if you go back five years ago or seven years ago, um, if you wanted to push your ASP.NET out, you had to kind of push it to ISS. So that's more expensive than a Linux host. So but that's my change, number, right? But things, things change, things like change. This, things change, and, and it's, it's like changing. you get a, you get a lot of people sleeping on this stuff. You really do because they're like, oh yeah. man, this is just like. Well, firstly, like I think the average. The average person out there, the average consumer, believes Microsoft as a brand is Windows, right? They're like, oh, they make computers, right, yeah. don't they? They do this operating system thing. I guarantee you, start looking at Microsoft Financials, Windows is like this tiny little sliver, a little, little bit. Um, it's part they, of it. It's, it is, sure it it's is. A but, but compared to their developer cloud. platform and the cloud, <laughs> yeah. it's it's like right. they could just do away with it. Like right. it's it's not it's but, not their core driver. I don't think at the moment. Yeah, but more than that, though, it's like how with the amount of money they have, what do they choose to do with it? Right. And so when you look at what they're doing is of, and you can take all the FANG stocks, you can take Google, you can take Facebook, you can take obviously Netflix, not a development company, but like let's say Apple and Microsoft and put those all in the same bucket. Who is most forward thinking in the terms of the development arena? who's spending their capital, their money, their time, and their expertise into building out um, the development arena stuff. Yes, surely Apple has tools that have a language to support their stuff. Right. That's it. If you want to write on iOS, you can do that. You can absolutely, you can take Swift and you can build on iOS. That's it. That's, that's, the, that's the, the scope of their vision. Um, now, maybe that vision will change in one day and Apple will say, well, we want to write things that run on Linux. I don't think that's ever going to change in Apple's. I don't if think anything, Apple... they're going to get more. They're going to pull more stuff in with their with their new chip yeah. technology. They're going to pull more right. stuff in. They get people. Yeah, we, we were talking about this the other day. You ever see Apple taking their M1 chip, which is going to like. It's dwarfing everything else in far as the speed, compatibility. Are they ever going to OEM that and let you put that in a Dell box? A hundred percent. I don't see that ever happening. I would, I, I would no, I'd bet I a million dollars if I had it. Well, what's going to happen never, is ever, ever, ever do They're that. not. The only way that these other competitors are going to catch up, AMD and Intel, are they're going to copy the architecture type. They're going to start putting everything on that one chip. This is what we were talking about. They're yeah. going to start putting, Apple right. would revolutionary putting the, the RAM and the graphics and everything on that single right. chip. And Intel and AMD are going to do exactly the same. It's a matter of time right. before we see that. Clearly yeah. it works. If they can do it. And so with, with Microsoft, when you start looking at what Microsoft's doing, they're doing the same thing, except 
they're, they're trying to innovate across the platform. Why? Because they want you to sign up and use Azure to host whatever app you're building. That's what this is about. And so like, therefore, if, if you're into my tools and you're into my language and you're using my framework and I make Azure the best for those tooling and framework and whatever, you're more than likely to pick Azure. Having said that, they're very smart. They're also allowing them to make sure that this stuff runs on AWS or Heroku um, with techniques like containerization um, and C Sharp being a first class citizen on all those platforms. Well, maybe Heroku, not so much, but definitely on Azure and AWS, you can write your functions in C Sharp. Um, and so like they are pushing this into all of the big platforms. And that's the second reason they're doing is the, the innovation that they're doing. Um, that the amount of time and effort they're spending on this as opposed to other companies. So let's look at some other companies, Kevin. I, I sent you an article. Yeah, yeah, hold on. One thing One thing first. Um, yeah. It's something to address. GC says Azure is freaking expensive. Azure and AWS are both freaking expensive. A hundred percent. But there's a reason why they're expensive. It's not, it's not for the individual, JC. It's for the company to build something on it. So like, um, but they're bouncing that with freaking expensive versus freaking awesome and scalable and redundant. Exactly. I mean, like, I mean, and, and if, and and if, if you're a company, if you're a software as a service company, like yes. this is your thing. You, expensive is like immaterial at that point because it's not. Right. It's like to, to a yeah, brand exactly. that's making a millions of dollars on this thing. It's not expensive. It feels expensive yeah. to a consumer because it's not targeted to a consumer. It's not. It's targeted to um, enterprise. And, and so let's talk about this. If Microsoft is targeting the enterprise, where are most of the jobs at in the enterprise? Like when you start looking at the breakdown of jobs, companies that can afford to put things on Azure also can afford to have their own development staff. And when they have their own development staff, they hire coders. And then when you walk into that company, the coder, the guy says, all our stuff's on Azure. We're using C Sharp to build our web APIs out. Guess what you're doing? You're coding in C Sharp at that point. And you can love React and you can love these other things, and but it's like, um, where you work also always dictates the platform that which you're using. Right now, yeah. you may be the the dev manager and in charge of that too. Yeah, it's super stable. Yeah. Yep. And that's again what you're paying for. It's <laughs> you, 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 that's right. That's it. That's it. Um, and there you go. Shuby says uh, it's expensive and worth it to people, uh, and people do pay for amazing services. That goes for anything, right? It's like any service that's yeah. Gonna and be I promise you, right stable. now. AWS and Azure, if you start looking at their, their per price or the per computing unit, um, Am Azure and Am Amazon have the exact same pricing. They are identical. They just, they put it in different logical units. One's per hour, one's per minute. And it's kind of funny when you start doing the math, they're like, oh, these things cost exactly the same. Yes. Trust me, when they're going after the same corporate customer, they're not going to lose to Amazon on price and Amazon's not going to lose to Azure on price. They're going to be, they're almost colluded. It's, it's, it's kind of ironic. <laughs> Maybe somebody will accuse you know? them of that at some point and there'll be some weird class action. Um, yeah. Who knows. Now, AWS is a larger cloud platform right now, but when you look at the amount of growth, I think it was 50 or 60% quarter over quarter growth for Azure. It tells you that companies are moving from one to the other, or they're getting brand new new customers as well. But people are right. um, leaving one over the other, and eventually they're both behemoths and they're both going to be large. But um, yep, um, Azure, I think it's going to um, take. Azure I think is a, is a dominant cloud platform for sure. But it's going to be both of them are going to be there for a while. There needs to yeah. be competition for sure. You right. There needs to be at least two in the market. Yeah. Yeah. There's and Google the thing too, too is you, if you think about it. It is really good on Azure from, from the enterprise perspective. And if you think about it, they built their cloud and yeah, they're number two, but they also built Google out. They beat Google out. Google tried to do this. Right. They've built Salesforce out. They tried to build theirs. I mean, they they beat them all and they're gaining on Amazon. So I right. think that's why when I say this is if that's going to be the, the dominant cloud platform, then the first class citizen of that is C Sharp. That's what that's their goal is to make everything um, you can do everything you want on Azure with C Sharp. And that's their goal. Right. Which yep. means you're going to do it. So let's talk about this question then. You feel it's important to learn Azure fundamentals breaking in. 
I don't know about breaking in today, uh, but it's definitely uh, something you should know how to push things up to. Here's the cool part, Eric, is they're making the fundamental of it stupidly easy to do. Like it's built into right. Visual Studio as far as like pushing your crap to Azure. Now it may not be optimized. It may not be the best way that you would do it, but you absolutely, it's built into the tooling. And that's the other thing. My third point is the tooling. So like when you talk about building applications, whether it be web, desktop or whatever, you got to build it with something. And um, by way, by far and away, VS Code and Visual Studio are the best tooling out there. Now, it can be debated, but when you ask people, people absolutely love VS Code and they really, really like Visual Studio. Um, and those tooling is what makes it simpler and easier to do. So when you see .NET 5, and now soon to be in less than a year, this November, .NET 6 comes out, um, a lot of those improvements are in the tooling themselves to make you more productive as a developer, to make you easier to build things. Um, and so all of that stuff is comes down the pipe. So they own the tooling and they own the language, they own the framework, and they're going to own the dominant cloud platform. You see where I'm going with this, guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And, the, and then they have the enterprise sales group that's trying to sell the companies on Azure. And guess what they're saying? And it's easy to do, people. You can use C Sharp and build stuff out. It's very easy to do. So here's his, his another t-shirt okay. Microsoft needs to make. <laughs> <laughs> Push your crap to Azure. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's that's very funny. Um, okay, so let's talk about oh actually before we before we jump over to talk about another company, um I could yeah, talk about of, another company. Actually, before we do that, though, let's talk about you asked people what what else is going to take over instead. So okay, let's, yeah, so let's I'm get curious through, to see what they're so, going to So say. let's go through some of the some of the suggestions right. here. So first one, so what else is I'm guessing this over? is a troll, Dino. <laughs> uh, all, all, always with the Dino. We love we love the Dino. Yeah. Uh, says Amazon with a with a rolling eyes. We kind of talked about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay, first person to say JavaScript was Kaylee. Okay. Um, so JavaScript is interesting. And what I would say about JavaScript, Kaylee, is right now it is one of the way, what is the language of the web? In other words, like if you build a website, you have to use JavaScript today. Okay. And I want to save what I'm going to say about JavaScript in a second with, with our uh, advancement into Facebook. But in general, I want you to think about, well, I'll save that. JavaScript is the language of today, but when you talk about the enterprise stuff, the things to make it run on the back end, because every website can't be front end only. Every website pretty much when you get an enterprise is a full stack website, which means code runs on the server. In order to have any kind of security, you have to have a server side code. Now, you can do that with Node.js and you can, you can do it that way. But when you start really looking at what people are doing, um, they're building that with REST APIs. And the, one of the best platforms out there is Web API from C, with C Sharp. It allows you to have security built in. It allows you to host it anywhere or run anywhere. It runs in a container, which means it can run on Heroku, it can run in AWS, and it also runs obviously on Azure. You can run them locally in the tooling and so that you can test these locally. Um, so the tooling and their whole round trip experience allows you to build REST APIs that can be consumed by a JavaScript front end. All right, so, so let's say that um, JavaScript's gonna take over and we do it on the front end. I'm still telling you right now that that back is gonna be mostly powered by C Sharp because of, of where Microsoft's doing it. Okay, So Next having one. said that. Sorry, go on, yeah. Because <laughs> Python is simpler and people are simple. <laughs> that could be true. I mean, but I, I I don't know that people are always looking for simpler. No, people not, are looking to solve problems. Yeah, you might be and looking for a simple way to learn um, programming, and right. it might be a good way to learn, but it's not necessarily the right. best way to build a complex, large scale web application. Yeah. Right. Even though you and then you're also, um, I wouldn't say that Python is necessarily simpler. Yeah. You know? It depends. I think it's once, like once you learn um, how to do it, uh, once you learn how to do a web API or learn how to build a, something in VC, 
it's pretty simple. There is a learning curve, but once you get there, it's, you know, right. Uh, so for he says Java languages. or JavaScript. Yeah. I mean, those are all two different yeah, things, but he's, different I guess languages. he's putting his bet on both. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think Java, if you had to look at it and you had to take a bet and you had to pick one or the other, C sharp and Java are very similar. JavaScript's a whole different, that's the front end piece. Um, C sharp by far and away has been more inventive over the last five years than Java has. So like you're going to see a lot of migration from that to C sharp. Um, and then a lot of the Java usage has been built in and around Android development, rightfully so, but Google has since moved on to other, they're going to do it in other ways. And so that could put a dent in overall Java usage as well, because it doesn't necessarily run on Android phones. When they talk about billions of devices, Java runs on a billion devices, the set tops and it's phones. And that's, that's kind of where it runs. And so if that falls out of favor in, in lieu of something else, uh, which seemingly what Google wants to do, then you can see its usage drop. Not next week. Should you quit your Java job today? No, keep getting paid. You'll probably get paid for the next five years. But um, if you want to be forward thinking and looking into the future, start learning C sharp because I think it's going to, um, it will definitely supplant it in usage. Java may never, ever die. Paul yeah, says he exactly. made the right choice eventually. <laughs> So Paul was okay. a stack switcher. So, those of you that haven't heard yeah. the story here before. Right. <laughs> so let's talk about like when people talk about JavaScript, Kevin, what are they actually talking about usually? I think people in general are talking about either two things. They even talk about Angular or they're talking about React. And right. let's just take React. So like when you guys talk to me and you're saying um, JavaScript is of the world, a lot of people really are talking about um, React is development, and it's true. You can build, you can you can build mobile apps with React Native, and you also can build um, websites with React. But let's be clear: what React is, it's a framework. .NET is an ecosystem. The, on the scale and scope of what you can do with React is dwarfed by what you can do with um, .NET and C Sharp. And they're just, they're in two different classes of things here. Cause I'm really talking about .NET and .NET allows us to build anything. Um, we can build mobile, we can build desktop, we can build, you know, IOT, we can build websites, obviously. Um, there's a lot of things that we can build that you can't do with just um, React or JavaScript. And so that's why the, the frameworks can come and go. And it's funny that our first uh, example, Kevin, you showed me was Dino. Right. Which is the, right. you know, the react killer. And so like, um, let's, let's show you the article I'll put you in a Facebook. And I just want people to understand it doesn't mean you shouldn't learn react at this point. It just tells you what Facebook is thinking. So if you didn't know this, Facebook's developed by react, a fifth of the Facebook employees, 10,000 are now working on AR and VR, which is their Oculus line, their Oculus line and the quest or whatever that thing's called. Yep. 10,000 people. Meanwhile, Microsoft is pushing all of their development talents and expertise into building .NET and .NET is on now on this annual release schedule. So you have .NET 6 coming out in, in 12 in less than 12 months, November of this year, you had .NET 5 last year, and it's going to come out on an annual basis every year um, with improvements in speed, stability, tooling, where you can run it, how it runs. And that's what Microsoft thinks about each and every day um, and how they interact with the cloud, whereas Facebook clearly is putting most of their eggs into the social media company and into um, the hardware development of AR and VR, which is a good bet. It's a good bet. That just means that React isn't the biggest thing on their mind. Read the quote from Zuckerberg in that article. Uh, well, let me see. Let me put it back up again. It's at the last line of it. So today, most of what Facebook does is we're building on top of other people's platforms. Mm -hmm. I think it really makes sense for us to invest deeply to help shape what I think is going to be the next major computing platform. This combination of augmented and virtual reality to make sure that it develops in this way that is fundamentally about people being present with each other and coming together. Right. That's 
they're not yeah. concerned with like the next generation of web development. I promise you that's not what that's not what keeps Mark Zuckerberg at life. Mark Zuckerberg wants to make the next computing device, the next mobile phone. He he's looking at what Apple did when they released the first mobile phone. He wants to be there doing that. He wants to walk out on stage and go, now everyone's going to wear this on their face. Yeah. That's what he wants to do with the black yeah. turtleneck and everything. <laughs> um, that he wants to build a brand new ecosystem around it. And he just might achieve that. But yeah. guess what? We're going to write code on that platform, probably with C sharp. Well, look, here you go. Look at what, uh, look at what Paul said. He started making simple things from my quest with unity and C sharp. <laughs> oh. so there you go. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, and you and you've been strong on this for like a couple years now. A couple years back, you started delving into this when you you bought a Hololens when it first came out. Yeah, knowing this was going to be a thing and looking at it. Yeah. So I think Unity and C Sharp being and Unity being one of the premier um, gaming um, platforms out there where you can build games, it's it's really powerful. And then so you're going to use C Sharp to do that. So. If AR and VR takes over, like I think it might, um, we're going to go from web programmers to game programmers, and game programmers are going to be using things like Unity and C Sharp or maybe Unreal Engine or something else as well. But in general, these AR and VR headsets pretty much have settled in and around um, deploying to these headsets using Unity. And that's super powerful. And the, the language behind that is C Sharp. Right. So here's the other thing I want people to think about. So finally, the other thing that's really big in, in .NET 6 is something called .NET MAUI, which is multiple application UI, which means that you'll be able to write code and push it to a desktop. You can push it to a mobile device or you can push it to web. Um, this will cause us to rename things like Xamarin and .NET MAUI. Um, and it's going to consume the Blazor tech and the Xamarin cross-platform forms tech. All of that is being pushed into .NET 6. Um, we will see the previews are just coming out. Um, will they hit the deadlines this November? Um, they hit it for the ASP.NET and .NET 5, so I have no doubt that they will get there, which means that we can now turn around and write code that can run anywhere in a cross-platform native way, and that's kind of cool, which means I can write a desktop app that will run on Mac OS and Windows. I don't believe Linux is a target, and I don't know if it ever will be. But it is open source, which means that someone else can port that to Linux if they want to. And that's cool. Definitely. Okay, somebody's asking. So, uh, Let's talk about this real quick. Yeah, go somebody's ahead. asking. While well, we're talking about other, other languages, somebody's asking about PHP. What do you think PHP is? Yeah, so, so, like, what about PHP? So, like, PHP is used a lot in, in and around WordPress development is the primary usage of PHP. And that's the thing is if you're going to be building WordPress sites, plugins in and around WordPress marketing companies, it's used for a different thing. It doesn't mean you can't carve a career out with it. I would never fault anyone saying, I'm not going to call you a less than a programmer because you, you rock out PHP. I don't use PHP. I don't know much about WordPress. I mean, I could learn it if I wanted to, but that's not where I want to live. Um, so, but it's not going to be the dominant platform. It's it's used in a certain segment of of what we do. And we're C Sharp, we're building websites with C Sharp. We're already doing that. Here's the thing that I think is that people don't think about. Let's think about React for a second, Kevin. React is a framework. Angular is a framework. And Microsoft being like this centric company that decided to build certain things, they decided that JavaScript wasn't really good enough because it wasn't type safe. Um, and, was, and we all know the problems um, when you're writing JavaScript. So they come out with something called TypeScript. They revolutionized JavaScript development by, by pushing out TypeScript. So much so now that React is rewritten with TypeScript. That's how it's being used. So if Microsoft thought that Angular and React was going to rule the world, they would have built a React competitor. Right. They would have built a JavaScript front-end framework. But what did they do? No, they, they put templates inside of Visual Studio that allows you 
to use the React binding framework, just the front end. It's just a UI layer. In fact, people don't know this. When you get the UI layer, you also have to include other libraries to get things like routing, and then you got to include Node.js if you want anything to run on the server. So there's a lot of things that you got to kind of cobble together to get React to really be a whole full stack thing. They said, well, we're just going to use React on that front end. We like it. It's a nice binding framework. We want you to couple that with Web API so that you can build this kind of like JavaScript frame framework. But having said all of that, Kevin, they could have built a binding framework if they wanted to. They have the start of it in Razor Pages. They could have absolutely did that. What did they do, though? They built Blazor. Right. <laughs> That's what they did. Because right. when you start looking through like the things that they're trying to do, they're like, oh, that Angular thing has been done. Like, So we think the next iteration of that, the next logical leap is WebAssembly. And so like, let's put our money, time, and effort there. And they've spent lots of time and resources devoted to building that platform out because they think that is really the future of modern, when they call it modern web development, which is they're putting Angular and React in that class and then Blazor does the same thing. <laughs> it does right. the same thing, a yep. different way. There's a different binding framework. There's a different way of doing and achieving the same thing, but it does the same thing. All, only thing Microsoft have to do is build, um, all they have to do is build a bonding framework. Yeah, it's nine years old. It's not like right. it, they made it last week. And that's the thing too, but you'll find that it's a hot topic right now, even though it is yeah. nine years old. Um, and it seems right, it is about, it, they, they play a long game. It's about patience. It's about seeing where the market's going. Um, and that's-, that's And it's also kind of really, if you think about it, it's about improving the lives and the productivity of developers. They don't put things out just to do it. They're trying to make this thing better because guess what? They also write code. They're also trying to write code to make things and do things uh, inside of Microsoft. And they're like, man, JavaScript sucks. We all know that. Let's make that better. Like yeah. we're Microsoft. Can we make that better? And I'm sure that's that was. Can we can we do something about this? We're you know we're Microsoft, and that's they probably have meetings, and that's how TypeScript was born. Um, they all th thought about the things that they wanted to push. And, and no, you can, I'm sure we'll get a thousand um, examples of like, well, these, this thing sucked by Microsoft. Bill Gates did this wrong. It's not like they're a perfect company. Okay, I get it. I use Chrome every day. They've kind of lost the browser war. Right. That's, that's, that's ship sales. So? No, and, ch and changing the name. <laughs> not going to make it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, make it any so better. What? It's still, it, it's still yeah, Internet you know. Explorer with a little like, uh, what is it? Like yeah. a little wolf's, a little sheep's mask on, isn't it? Still, yeah. it's, still the, it's still the wolf. It's still Internet Explorer. But. They, they can't make a phone. We get that. It's okay. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. not going to win on the phone. They've tried a couple of times to make a phone. They still got the, with the Surface Duo. I mean, I don't know if that thing ever will get to a store, but. Yeah, did it even come out? You know, yeah, I know. <laughs> they announced it. Did it come out? <laughs> so, like, um, yeah, but uh, you know, so but that's not my point. My point is about the language and the toolings that of, of which we build things, of which us coders, and that's where we all are coders. Whether you're a you're a junior, a mid, or a senior, you make your living writing code, and it's definitely more beneficial to you to use the thing that's most in demand, because guess what? When you're more in demand, you make more money, you have more options, or you can just decide, I'm just gonna be a Linux administrator and go off to that corner of the world. And like, I only do things in, in, in the script or at the console level, and you can make a living doing that. But it's way better if you're a .NET, full stack, uh, ASP.NET developer, that can build web APIs and things like that. You'll, you'll work on more interesting things, you'll work on bigger things, and you'll have more career options, you know? And so what I caution people on, yeah, we use Chromium and Edge now, but even then it's just not really. And actually, it's man, here's, here's a, new, a new thing that you may not know. Who is the biggest contributor to the open source Chromium project? Microsoft. They're actually making Chromium better so that Edge- They have an interest in it, don't they? So better. Yeah. They've just given up and they said, fine, we'll, we're just going to contribute to this. And so that is the, um, and I'm not saying they're the perfect company. I don't work for them, but like, that's the good, uh, the good side of Microsoft where they contribute to these open source things and try to help the community along, you know, because why 
they want Edge and Chrome to both be good so that when you build a website with ASP.NET, it actually works. Right, you know? right. They have a definite interest in it. <laughs> so, yeah, they have a vested interest in making sure this particular platform works and functions well, and they might as well have their hand in it. So they do push in changes into the Chromium project. And it's, you know, self-centered. You can say whatever you want. They want Edge to be better. I get it. But, it you know, it helps Chrome as well. That's fine. They're good with that. They've given up. They'll let Google have the <laughs> have the have it. I like it. Okay. Um, before we do some questions and some other stuff too then, sure. um, w one thing first. I did push out uh, a new uh, T-shirt yesterday. I'm just going to put this up real quick if you're interested. Uh, I pushed out this all branded shirt yesterday that you can get um yeah. you get in the premium tee you can get in a regular tee that goes up to 5xl i like this premium tee if you can get this one um it's super good quality i also uh have uh this cool zip hoodie that i thought was cool too yeah i don't think yeah. you've even seen this yet buddy with the zip hoodie with the, small not, the logo me. and then the regulars hoodie which i have on now i don't have the, the that logo one. i have the, the matte black one on uh but I th i'm gonna grab this one i think this one's cool yeah so yeah, so that's and out so there. We've done, Links we've, in the description below. For all of our merch, we'll tell them our strategy, Kevin. Our merch has dropped the Foundry name because Coder Founder is the boot camp. Um, but we want you to be proud of being just a coder in general, whether you come to our boot camp or not. Um, and so we've rebranded our merch to just use the word coder. So even if you're not attending our boot camp, um, that's intended to identify you as a coder. So that's it. And so um, if you if you if you're coding for a living, um, just put it on there. I noticed, too, when I wear Coder Foundry T-shirts all the time, people would would just say Coder. Yeah, because you, know, you don't see the Foundry like tucked under there at the bottom. But yeah, 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 they don't see the Foundry plug. So we just dropped that for the merch. You don't have to rock our boot camp brand necessarily, but um, you can definitely um, make it known that you write code for a living you're a coder and i think that's a i think it's a great brand and, and there's a link down below in the description if you guys are interested the merch links down there and that's yeah. up there now i'm gonna leave the old merch up there for now but i'll probably take that down eventually too so it's gonna be gone so if you do want a cf t-shirt yeah that matte black now. hoodie then <laughs> you may go grab it now okay you, you want to do some questions okay absolutely um, let's do some questions I may even have some more grants on C sharp, but um, <laughs> we have to extend this into another day. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, let I mean, me see. So, uh, Nagia, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Wants to know how much JS HTML and CSS is necessary to be hireable as a .NET web dev. Good question. So, in general, web page is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So, you need to know how to build web pages with those three technologies. The server side of your web application will run in .NET or C Sharp. So I think you need to know HTML, CSS pretty well, and you need to know JavaScript. You need to know how to manipulate the DOM in JavaScript. You need to know how to do all of those things, how to call REST API services with JavaScript. There's a lot you need to know, but you don't have to know everything about it, you know? Um, so if you look at something like ASP.NET MVC, um, that is going to be a post back framework that is very kind of beneficial to a lot of projects still to this day. And it uses less JavaScript, um, versus something like a react, which is completely a JavaScript front end for binding. So, um, look at ASP.NET, um, MVC today, and then that may lessen the amount of things you need to know HTML, CSS to get going. So, but you're gonna have to know all all of those. So, and that's because when we talk about being full stack, that means all of yep. those technologies and the back end part, right? Is it is it yep. common at a company that that is split, or that's more common that that's together these days? I think you're seeing like um, a lot of companies are still using MVC, um, which is that full stack project. But then there's a lot of companies, and like Paul from Coding Up to Thirty is doing is like a JS front end with React and then a .NET C Sharp back end on the server side with Web API. And then React is calling into those APIs to get the information, to, to implement security, to hit the database, those kind of things. So there's both ways that this is being built. 
um, Microsoft allows you to build all of those things with Visual Studio. So React and Angular supported right inside of Visual Studio. And then you um, can also build out what I what we teach in the bootcamp here is ASP.NAVC, um, which doesn't use a pure JS front end. It's an HTML and the forms are rendered on the server and then served back up as a web page, as an HTML page to you. Okay. Um, this is not a, the next one is not a question, but hold on. I don't know if you saw this in chat, but look, Zach, uh, who is currently enrolled in the bootcamp, accepted a yes. job. He's doing some paperwork and orientation right now. Zach, let us know, uh, let us know where. Send us a Teams message. I'm interested. Yeah, man. Zach sent us, Zach is in our bootcamp and got a job. That's cool. Awesome. Um, we still have two weeks left in this current cohort. So he's done a great job of, of, um, pushing his stuff out there on Twitter, um, DevTO, Medium, yep. LinkedIn, um, building out his stuff in the school. That's awesome. I can see you starting a YouTube channel, Zach. And when you yeah. get, get on that next, I think you'd be good at it. Yeah. That's awesome. Congrats. That's very, very cool. Um, okay. Uh, Nagia, which also had a question, but I think it's similar to before. What's the minimal stack necessary to be employable using C Sharp? ASP.NET. Just look at ASP.NET with NBC. I think that's the thing that um that you need to be searching into. Okay, Okafor Teddy says just recently started learning .NET. That's awesome. It's the best experience ever. I was working with Java, Spring Boot prior to learning .NET. You guys made me look into it. It's totally worth it. Awesome. Yeah, I think I think. And I say this with all the love in the world of the people that write in Java, but when you start looking at the tooling and you're just objective and you look at Java, Spring Boot, I guess you're using Eclipse, maybe NetBeans or whatever, that suite of stuff has been left behind when you start really looking into like what Microsoft's building with Visual Studio and you're like, wow, okay, this, this is different. The tooling is that much better. Um, you're more productive. I think it's easier to do. Um, and then they are constantly innovating on these platforms. And that's the other thing I wanted to bring up was the innovation is constant. So it's not that React doesn't come out. I mean, I think it just went out to um, version 17. It's not that they're kind of like pushing the envelope with um, React or, but who who is maintaining, who is the in charge of Java and the tooling and things like that? So when those platforms come together, it's a collection of like a lot of things to make it work. And Microsoft is saying, here's our answer to these problems. And we're evolving on this in an open source way. We're evolving on this in, a, in with our own internal resources as we push this out in the marketplace. And we're committed to open source. We're committed to cross platform. We're committed to speed, security, and having the best tooling on the planet. And um, it's really hard to, uh, for other companies to catch them because the amount of time and effort they're putting into it. And that's when you when you really get down and you start using jo uh, Visual Studio, it's amazing. I remember when I did a, a thing for the, uh, the group out there in Memphis with Danny Thompson's group, yep. and uh, I was showing a model first or code first development. Yeah. And like, I don't know if you were there when that happened, so I type up my model and then yeah. I hit, you know, slash update database right from Visual Studio and it created a SQL database. Yeah. And everyone in there says, it's not that easy. You can't <laughs> then, possibly do that. And I remember somebody What's, saying, I, I remember somebody saying, I need to see that again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what is this black magic that he does? <laughs> you that's know, funny. and yeah. so like, and then we're saying, no, that's what Microsoft does, man. Like, you know, I had a database up in minutes. And then um, I'm on to building my app. And so those are the types of things I believe that Okafor is talking about. He's like, man, okay, this is cool. <laughs> you know, it's, it's easier yep. to do. Yep. Okay, Osama uh, says, and thank you for the question, says, how can someone overcome nervousness and confusion in front of an interviewer? Mm. Any tips for people? I think we talk about this quite a bit. And um, it's not easy and a lot of people do it, but here's what you have to do to, to be better in an interview. Number one, you need a portfolio of projects. Second, whatever you're interviewing for, let's just assume that that's .NET right now or C-sharp, but it, let's, it could be React, it could be Angular, it could be anything. Look at the top 30 questions in the stack that you're interviewing for. 
relate each and one of those questions to your project so that when someone asks you what is MVC, you can simply say model view controller, but I built a blog in MVC and let me show you how I implemented one of my models on that project. Boom. And then suddenly you're demoing. And so when you can take an interview and turn it into a demo of your projects, you'll have less nervousness because you know what you're talking about, less confusion because you're going to take them the, to the places you understand very well and you'll perform better in interviews. Hope that helps. I think we've done a lot of videos on that. Yep. Kevin. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. Um, let me see. So Neil says in the UK, a lot of job posts on LinkedIn slash indeed just use C sharp software developer as the job title. No mention of junior in the description or title. How do I know the job post is aimed at juniors? Um, just look and see what years of experience they're looking for. If it's two and under or three and under apply, especially if you've already built projects in C sharp. Yeah. If you have a portfolio and it says a years of a year of experience apply anyway. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing is if they're paying, um, less than a certain wage and it's low pay, then they're going to get juniors, even though they want seniors and mids. <laughs> right. We've definitely seen that. You're like, oh, we want somebody with five years experience for $35,000. You're like, hold on a minute. That's, 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 <laughs> well, that ain't happening. <laughs> that's, yeah, you're never going to, you're never, yeah. ever going to fill that job. So, right. Yeah. So that way that if you apply with a developer uh, portfolio that has C sharp projects on it, you're, you're, you may be one of the few that actually applied with experience, even though you haven't worked in the industry yet, you can show that on your resume and because of the price, they've priced them out of the market for everyone else with experience and you may get that job. And that's why you apply, especially if you have a portfolio of projects. Yep. And just remember, don't, don't be afraid to apply. To. If they put junior in it, it just means they're paying less. So that's all it means. Right. You want to pay less. Right. And don't be afraid of uh, applying either. The worst thing that's going to happen is you get no answer or a no. I mean, that, who cares? The other thing that like, could happen, Kevin, in a real way is that you applied for one job, but you didn't see the other post for the for the junior job. Right. Or they didn't or even that job wasn't even that posted. One. Exactly. Yeah, and they're like, ooh, yeah, you come on in. How much do you cost? And they just put you in because yep. they can get you in cheaper. Yep. They'll do it. So yep, don't, definitely. don't self-assess yourself out of a job by not applying. Yep. Now, if it says 20 years and it's got senior and you can't do any of that stuff, then I get it. Don't apply for those. But if you're like, man, I can build those apps, then by all means apply to it. You're not going to get hurt. They're not going to yell at you for applying. No, so. no. The worst thing that's going to happen is you just get nothing back. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, Nuke Doom wants to know, is C-Shop a good alternative for data science? Here's what I've been saying for two years now, Kevin, that data science without a doubt is going to get easier to do. I promise you right now that the, the innovation around data science is to make it easier to do. Now the cloud platforms have a lot of to do with that in order that you can literally load your data, train your data. You can do a lot of things, a lot of the out of the box things right up in Azure. Um, so they're also building ML.net. Now, if you're out there and you're working in data science today, it's still Python um, because a lot of those um, early libraries were built in Python and that's why you have to know Python to do it. Um, Microsoft is trying to do that with ML.net and C Sharp. Will they get there? I don't know, but it's a good alternative for sure and uh, building things will get easier to do. Now, once it gets easier to do, you may not have the need for Python any longer that a lot of these workloads are, are already done for you and it becomes more, more low code, not initially all low code, but like more options where if I just need to train my data and here's some pre-built models, I can do that. Um, but if you need to write code, ML.NET is definitely an option, but probably Python is still the predominant way to do it today. But I don't think it's going to stay that way. That's what I keep I'm saying is like they're working on it. Yep. It's going to change. Why? Because they want you to come to Azure 
to run all your training and your models on to build your data science centric solution. They want that's where they want it to happen. And then they want to build the framework and the tooling to make it easier for you to do that. So they're not going to rely on someone building TensorFlow to to innovate for them. They're going to take control of that and innovate themselves so they can make it easier for the developer. It's all developer centric view that Microsoft has. And while when you look at today, right now today, okay, Python, that's the way you, that's what you're going to be learning. That's what you're going to be doing. Um, or maybe R or maybe other things. I mean, there may be other languages that happen and then, but Microsoft's going to try to make it easier to do by far, for sure. Okay. It's a good, um, if this is really a question, but let's talk about something you were talking about earlier, I think, but wouldn't it be boring to do web development after 30 years? Is that, is, I think that's 30 years. I don't know. 30 you years, like doing it? <laughs> 30 years. Well, I mean, it's like, See, when you think about anything, right? If you think about web development from when it started to now, it's very, very, very different. It's not like you're doing the different. same thing for 30 years. It's not like you're, yeah. you know, spinning the wheel for 30 years and it's just like you just stood there doing the same thing. That's not what it is. It's it's a constant learning curve, right? Yeah. So, so I've been doing this for about 30 it. years. I'm not bored? bored of it. <laughs> nah, I think it's still pretty fun. So. But it's so different now, surely, than it was 30 years ago, too. Yeah, and, but you know what, though? Let's say that you can only stomach it for the next 10 years, but you carved out a good career for 10 years, and then in the 11th year, you said, do something different. Okay, you should still do it because you're going to make money while you're doing it. But um, if, if you want to go do something different, I, I get that. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it today. Right. I mean, you don't have to stay with the one thing you know how to do forever. You can do something else. You know, if you want to go and be a graphic designer or, or, you know, painter or build chips, I don't know. I mean, like you could find something else to do. Okay. But um, I don't think it's boring. JC has a question. And thank you for the question. It says, can you comment on C-Sharp and the Bitcoin space? You think about C-Sharp and Bitcoin? You looked into this at all? So Ethereum has C-Sharp libraries for sure, so that you can build things on Ethereum. I wonder if they're so doing anything. I wonder that. if um, those new NFT things have anything to do with you can do anything with those with C-Sharp. I've, been, I've been researching that, how to build my own NFT. I haven't found a good resource yet, but I okay. think it's because it's brand freaking Probably. new. It's, yeah, exactly. Exactly. If um, anybody knows anything so, about C-Sharp and NFTs uh, on the blockchain, uh, throw it in chat yeah. or send us an email. You can send us an email, info at codafoundry.com. We're, we're looking to do something with that. So yeah, I do know there's um, Ethereum and C Sharp for sure in the um, you know, kind of the blockchain space. Yeah, but you've never built anything with it, right? You never actually, you know, no. to this point. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Uh, I'm gonna assume that's Loki. I hope I'm getting it correct. Loki. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Loki. Um, picked up Xamarin last month. Now on to Blazor. So go C Sharp. So Loki's all in on this. Okay, go C Sharp. Uh, let me see. Jose Sweet. says, what about microservices using C-sharp, distributed network apps and such? It's built in. They have man. that, right? It's ready to roll. It's, it's, a, it's a top flavor. If you go to um, .NET on the webpage, and then you'll see the microservices, which is really just a design pattern, but it's built into building out your microservice architecture on Azure, for sure. Um, well thought out, well established. We go right there there it is so you can click there learn everything you want to know but um runs in containers or docker so it's it's all ready to go that's that's been well thought out well traveled so if that's how you're constructing your app then they have a lot of resources up there and um c sharp being your your primary language for doing it. Okay. Right, any um, other question? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm um, jumping around a little bit here, but Kaylee has another question. Um, she graduated this May with a CS degree. When should I start applying for dev jobs? A lot of the places that I found want someone to start right away. It's a blessing okay. and a curse, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're so close. I would finish my CS degree and then start applying right when you get a little bit closer, maybe in which is only two weeks away from April. Um, 
you also can negotiate a start date too. Um, so like if, if they're right away and you can't start right away, I get that too. Um, depending on your course load. Yeah. Um, but like, um, you're probably here's, just finishing up classes. It's in the end of March here. Here's what I would say. I would say apply now. And if you can yeah. negotiate the start, great. Um, and it's afterwards. Um, if you can't and it's like, no, we need somebody right now, you're not going to get it. But you weren't going to get it anyway because they were going to hire somebody right. else anyway. So it's like you can't really lose. Um, and, if you yeah. do, and if you do get the job and they insist on a start straight away, you don't have to take it. Um, right. and, you know, and they can't negotiate, just move on. You know that you've, you've gone through the experience of going through the interview process and all that kind of good stuff. So it's, that's kind of what I would do. I'd apply right now. Cause a lot of times, um, it's going to take you several weeks to get through the process anyway. Yep. They may say, they may say, start right away, but you're not going to interview on a Wednesday and say, can you start tomorrow morning? Right. You know, that could happen, but typically they got to go it's decide the resume, maybe go through two or three person pr interview process yep. takes two or three weeks usually. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. And depending on the company, if you have to do a background check and that kind of stuff to add another week or so to it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me see. Here. Good luck, Kaylee. I hope you can get a job. Tell us if you get hired, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. We're interested. Let us know what you want to do too. It's interesting. Yeah. Exactly. It's interesting. It's cool. Um, let's see. Oh, I like this one. Someone wants to know, where do you see C Sharp or and .NET after five years? Is it worth learning for a complete beginner? Yeah, I think it's going to take over the planet in five years. So <laughs> I, think, I think that's where we're going. It's, the, it's going to be the dominant um, development platform in five to ten years for sure. It's definitely worth doing. Um, what, I what I always tell for beginners is learn the thing that's going to get you a job, not learn the thing that's easiest to learn. So go ahead and learn the thing that people want you to do so that you can actually get employed doing it. Don't learn. Uh, I just, it, it grates my nerves when people say, well, that I learned Python because it's beautiful syntax and it's easy to learn for the beginner. Right. And we do hear that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You have if to learn to hire me to do that. That's the problem as a junior, you know, like, right. whoa. You have to you learn know, what is going to get you hired, what is relevant right yeah. now, and what has a future. If you can get those three things, yeah. you're golden. Yeah. I don't think you need to learn the easiest. You need to learn thing to get your job. And so it's absolutely worth learning for a complete beginner. So if you think about it, um, is that Sama? Is that as I'm seeing it from a long yep, ways yep, away? Sama. Yep. They are releasing .NET six in November of this year and .NET seven of the next year and the year after that .NET eight. That is the the roadmap, the current foreseeable roadmap for for .NET for Microsoft. C Sharp's a big player in that, and so like, in other words, when you look at a, a behemoth like Microsoft. It's not like they're going to switch next week. I mean, like these these take um, discernible steps moving forward. Now, Microsoft's had some some missteps in the past where suddenly they ended support for Silverlight, and it really wasn't that they ended support for Silverlight. It's more like that plugins are going away from the browser anyway. So it was decided for them, and they adopted HTML5, which the def rest of the industry did, which was a good thing for the industry. Um, it just the way they did it was bad. I think Microsoft has learned from that mistake. And now they're saying, here's where we're going for the next three to five years. And you can count on this for the next three to five years. This is what we're doing. And, it, um, and I think that should give you a lot of comfort and that they're going to spend a, a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of resources, making sure that this development ecosystem .NET is um, worth to base your career around. Yep. One last thing here then before we wrap up here. And Kieran says, I like C Sharp, then Java, but surrounded companies don't hire C Sharp programmers. That goes back to our previous advice. You got to pick something that yeah. you can get hired for in your area. If that's Java. Just look Java. around, man. Uh, so I don't know where you live. Um, so just look around. Yep. What are they hiring for? And that's what you want to learn. And if that's Java, then stick yeah. with Java. Yeah, if that is. So. Okay, we're a little bit after the so hour. Primarily so in the uh, U.S. market, um, C Sharp is high in demand, and you can get a job doing it. Right. Very cool. All yeah. right, well, I think we're up today. It's taco time. We are. Um, it's taco time. We'll be back on Thursday. 
with another Thursday, interesting we'll topic. In Maybe I'll make another uh, uh, contentious topic to talk about on Thursday. <laughs> well, um, leave a comment. Uh, give us a like. There's a lot of you here. How many people are here? There's oh, there are over 100 here right now. We've got 62 likes. So so give us a little like. And if you like the topic, you know, let us know. Um, if you didn't, let us know. And we'll we'll talk about it. And if you've got any ideas of other topics, we'll, we'll see you in the comments and yep. interact with you there. Thursday's video is going to be JavaScript and why it sucks. Would that work? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no,